nation, Australia, has produced some remarkable men and women. Some of them are household names, some are not. Today at the Australian War Memorial, we are privileged. We are so privileged to welcome our Second World War official war artist, Mr Alan Moore, who is only one of two currently surviving official artists from the Second World War. Alan is 99, and I think for the first time in 60 years, uh, he is being reunited with this magnificent collection of artworks that are here together. He joined the Royal Australian Air Force in 1942. Uh, he convinced, the, with the support of William Dargie in 1943, convinced the Council of the Australian War Memorial to commission him as an official war artist, following in the footsteps, as he did, of some of the greatest artists this country has ever produced. Alan deployed in 1944, beginning on New Year's Day, but he went up uh, to New Guinea, the southwest Pacific. His initial watercolours uh, were unfortunately destroyed and damaged by the humidity and the wet weather. He switched to oils and then under Japanese enemy fire off the islands of New Guinea, uh, he continued to do the magnificent work, some of which is portrayed and exhibited here today. He then went uh, to Europe, the first Australian official water artist to do so, later in 1944. He would spend those bitter winters in Italy, painting the open briefings for the Air Force and painting the men, and paintings of those are uh, here exhibited at the Australian War Memorial. And then he went on to London in 1945. And we've just seen, as Alan has seen, his magnificent painting of the V2 bombing, more than 110 people killed, and the impact of the V2s on the people of London as it was then. He painted the Australians who had been released and, uh, from prisoners of war camps in Europe in their transit through England. But perhaps most significantly, as important as all of those are for us, significantly, I suspect, for Mr Moore, and certainly for us, he was at Bergen-Belsen when uh, the camp and those who remained still living were released. The drawings that he did of the blind man walking amongst the emaciated dead, the SS soldiers taking the bodies off the trucks for burial into the pits, so incredulous was one Welsh guard that he said to Alan, he said, you're mad, no one will believe you because they just simply will not understand the gravity of the deprivation that is before us. And thinking and reflecting on that, Alan then went and got a camera and he took photographs to support the paintings that he did. I'm quite sure that the, uh, the uh, enemy would be experiencing the same thing happening in their prison of war camps. I wanted, I wanted to make it because I thought that possibly it would stop the awfulness of, of the, the, the death of war. One of the um, main things is the uh, blind man. Blind man was walking through Belson, waving a stick in front of him to hit, hit bodies and things over there. <laughs> AIF, and it's got the number on it. And it's got your name. Yeah. It's your beret. That's right. Yeah.